Okay, so I'm gonna start over. <laughs> my name is Jeanette Flores, and my project title is Latinas in IT. Today, I will be discussing the underrepresentation of Latinas in STEM and sharing some statistics in STEM careers for the United States and for the San Bernardino County. I will also be talking about different ways that I would like to help bridge that gap. But before I begin, and in order for you all to better understand the reason why this project is so important to me, I would like to share some background information about myself. I'm a Latina, my parents uh, immigrated to the United States over 45 years ago. My father is from Ecuador and my mother is from Guatemala. I'm a first generation college graduate from Cal State San Bernardino and I work in the training services and technology support uh, department. And although I was born in the United States, I experienced racial discrimination early on in my education, beginning in elementary school through my college uh, years, which I feel affected me in terms of the resources or not having those resources available early on in my, in my education. Being that I, my native language is Spanish, I was enrolled in the bilingual program in elementary school. And that's where I first noticed some things that at that moment or at that time I didn't understand, which were uh, discrimination. And one of the things that I can point out is not having the textbooks available in a timely manner. And I clearly remember my second grade teacher meeting with my parents and expressing his concerns about the fact that we didn't have the right resources for our education. We were in the bilingual program. So I, early on, I noticed that discrimination or not having those resources that I needed in order to succeed. So I noticed early on these experiences between traditional classrooms and the bilingual classrooms in regards to, to the availability of the resources. I also noticed the discrimination from the kids in the traditional classrooms um, for myself and for other kids in my class or my, in my group, uh, being that our last name's a, a Spanish last name, Salcedo, um, I was picked on. And one of the most important things for me was my fourth grade teacher. I didn't understand it at that time but I can see that she was discriminating against me. Um, she told my parents at my fourth grade conference that they needed to learn English because we were in America. So all of these things just now as an adult made me take a look and really think about how can I make a difference? How can I reach out to that, you know, those young Latinas that, and make those resources available? Or if I can help bridge the gap, that's what I wanna do. And Unfortunately, my parents did not speak one word of English to advocate for me. And so I really did feel alone. And I really wish I would have had the, the support and the resources that I needed. Okay, so let's begin with why this topic. All of these experiences led to feelings of insecurity or not being worthy of having uh, an education like the rest of the kids. And I didn't understand the ramifications until now. So as an adult in the workforce, uh, the opportunities have not always been as quickly, uh, come as quickly as to others of different ethnicity, but now I'm starting to see changes, which is promising. <laughs> So in my current role, I have a technical role, which I get to troubleshoot technical issues for all the applications that we support on our campus at Cal State San Bernardino. And one of the things that got me thinking actually recently was what is the importance of hiring female and Latinas in, this, uh, in, in IT or in STEM in general. So an example of this is that I'm the only bilingual that gets the calls. So I speak Spanish. So when they call the tech support, the calls are transferred to me. And the, the interesting thing about it is, is that I get to talk to those Spanish speakers that are stressed out because they revert to their, to their native language. And one of the things that I commonly hear is, or frequently hear is, I am so glad that you answered my questions in my, in my native language. I am so stressed out about not being able to get to Blackboard. How do I access this application? So all of those things have made me really think about what is a role as, as on a campus. 
and how we can help bridge the gap. So I really do think that diversity and Latinas in general are important to IT and STEM in general. Why this is important to me? I'm a mother of three young girls and I care and I'm really invested in their education. I want them to have the best opportunities early on, the best resources that are available to them, something that I did not have growing up. This is important to me because I didn't have the support and the resources that I needed at a critical age. And I feel that my career path, because of this, did not progress as quickly as I wish. This topic is important to me because I want to ensure that I can be an advocate for young Latinas who have parents who come from other countries and who do not speak English. I'm a church leader in a small lower class Latino community. And I regularly have Latina mothers approach me asking me for help with their children's uh, reports, with their projects, or even translating the letters. In fact, one mother in particular, I was so stressed out for her during the pandemic because she comes up to me and she tells me the following. My daughter is failing and I cannot get a hold of her teacher. We're supposed to be remote and it's been over a month that I've been trying to contact her and she doesn't return my calls. So I went and I sat down. I trained the young girl, she's in fourth grade. I trained her or, or, or I helped her how to get into Google Chrome, how to upload her documents, her, her assignments and all of that. So I think it's so important because if not, Kids are not going to have the best opportunities or the, the best chances. So the fact that I work at a university gives me that option or that, that uh, opportunity to do something about it. Organizations could benefit greatly from hiring underrepresented minorities in the workforce. Each person brings a different perspective, a different life experience, a cultural experience to the workforce. As I mentioned earlier, the, the, the stressed out students that call in when I, they speak Spanish and, and I'm talking to them, they, they're so thankful that there's someone that understands them because it's a cultural difference. And I know that in a culture, you want to have someone that relates to you and makes you feel at ease. Diversity leads to greater productivity and allow for better problem solving. And it is because of this, because of my personal experiences that I wanted to focus on this topic. And it's not just IT, but STEM in general. On the screen, you should see the slide uh, that just talks about STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. For those of you that are, don't know what it is, it's just a broad term that is used to group these academic di disciplines. And of course, the ultimate goal of STEM is to encourage students to take an interest in STEM subjects at an early age. And this, of course, is going to benefit not only uh, the job market, but it will benefit our economy. Moving on to the statistics or what the research shows. On screen, you should be able to see the latest data from the National Science of Engineering. It's from 2019. I want you to pay attention to the pie, pie chart on the left. It shows that the male gender, white ethnicity dominate the STEM field. And as you can see, 66% of the jobs are occupied by men and 34% of jobs are occupied by women. And as far as ethnicity goes on the chart to the right, it's 77% whites in STEM. And then we have 23% underrepresented minorities. And from that 23%, only 7% are women. So in this data, we can clearly see that women are underrepresented, but even so Latinas are greatly underrepresented in the STEM field. Moving on to the next slide. The field is more leveled when a woman gets a bachelor's degree. If we look at the data on the slide, we see that women 
with the 44%, if they have a, a, a bachelor's and males, 56% chance. <laughs> so this clearly shows the importance for women to earn a bachelor's degree to have a shot at a job in STEM, in the STEM field. So that means that only 26, per, that, that women that make up only 20 plus, per 26 percent of the workforce without a bachelor's degree. So you have to get that bachelor's degree in order to have a chance in a STEM field. Okay, so the, these are the findings that the National Science uh, reported. Scientists and engineers are the backbones of the creation and development of the STEM knowledge and expertise of the US economy. So we see that the advancement of technologies in every aspect as it relates from shift, from non-shift, excuse me, from, while it shifts from non-STEM to STEM jobs. And technology is always evolving, it's always expanding and growing, and it, build, and it yields better opportunities. So that was just the, the United States statistics. Now let's look at San Bernardino community indicators. So we have three different types of um, indicators. We have the associates, the bachelors, and the graduates. You can see clearly how the associates at one point was enough, but then it dropped drastically. So an associate is no longer enough to acquire a STEM job. You have to have that bachelor's or higher. And then if we look at the California Education Trust West uh, statistics, they also show us something that's really important which is the different types of uh, ethnicities. We have the low income, we have African-Americans, which is the orange. We have the Latino, which is the, I wanna say yellow. <laughs> we have white, which is the red and the Asian. In every category, grade eight algebra, grade eight science, grade eight math and science. Again, we see how Latinos and African-American are the lowest categories in all of the subject. So this shows us that we need to do something better. <laughs> Where African American and Latinos are in the bottom of the pack. Asians and whites are on the top. And this is consistent with all the subjects. So we have a long way to get there. So with that in mind, this is my proposal. Create an outreach program partnering with the San Bernardino Unified School District that will target underrepresented minorities, excuse me, students in grades seven and eight. Remember, of the 23% underrepresented minorities, only 7% are women, and then statistics are even lower if it comes to uh, Latinas. This program would help expose students to careers in STEM, and it would create a foundation to help pave the way for Latinas in STEM degrees. So the first thing that I did in putting together this proposal is I work at the CSUSB campus, and we have a lot of resources there that I was not aware of. So I was very fortunate to make contact with the Office of Community Engagement. And they advocate and support our on-campus community to serve through partnerships with local pro profits, nonprofits, K through 12, schools, government agency, and community benefit organizations throughout the San Bernardino and Riverside County. So I reached out to the director to consult with her about my project, and she did guide me through the process, and she was there to mentor me through this. So she gave me some potential leads. Uh, that I could reach out to. She said, she said, based on your project, I'm gonna recommend that you reach out to the San Bernardino Alliance for Education. So the San Bernardino Alliance for Education, they partner with businesses and education to enhance the development of local talent and for the San Bernardino County and to make sure that the students are successful into, in an entry into local careers. 
The Alliance for Education supports ongoing effort, efforts to inform students, educators, and families on emerging demands of the world within the San Bernardino County. They have very innovative approaches and collaborative partnerships. And the interesting thing about this is that I met the director of the program. It's called the Semapalooza program, in which they, re they reach out to the San Bernardino community, seventh and eighth grade uh, students. They have an upcoming event in March. And one of the things when I, when I gave him my proposal and I talked to him, he said, you know, the one thing that my director has asked me for that we do not have in place is for a Spanish speaker to do a video talk. A video talk is what they do in order to present careers in STEM. So he said, we do not have a speaker that has um, recorded one in Spanish. So he said, do, are you interested in doing a video talk about what you do in IT in Spanish? And I said, yes, of course, I'll do that. I did that two weeks ago. And I did it both in Spanish and English. So in March, these students that go to the Semapalooza event are going to be hearing what I do in, in Spanish and English. So I think that's a great start because that hasn't been done before. And then the other event or the other organization that I reached out to was, it's part of the cybersecurity program at Cal State San Bernardino. They have a Gen Cyber Girl Scout. So I reached out to the coordinator and he he, he, when he and I met, he mentioned the opportunity for me to be a group lead in their event that is in the third week of June, in which I will get the opportunity to help with the course uh, or what we're going to provide to our uh, girls that come to, to our campus. <clears throat> In addition to that, I recently came across this article from UCLA about women in IT. So I reached out to the director of our CSU chancellor's office to talk about the, the possibilities of some, starting something new for our CSU campus. Or, and she was receptive uh, and she welcomed the idea and she's on board as well. So, and another thing that happened through this is the Empower Committee which also helps just empower our faculty, our students, and our staff members at Cal State San Bernardino. So I'm very excited about these opportunities because all of this has happened because of this project, this small idea that I thought about that could possibly make a difference. But I want to go back to the previous slide where I met with the, the Stemapalooza director. I just want to share the following. I asked him for permission for this, and he said that I could definitely use his story. He's a Mexican, graduated from Cal State San Bernardino in, uh, in cybersecurity. He was the only minority in the program. It's white, male, and male dominant. And he told me the following that he felt, sometimes he felt like, um, that IT environment is logical concept and it's hard to understand. And sometimes the environment can, can be unwelcoming for someone from a different culture. Um, so if that's a man's perspective, now think about women. How do women feel in the STEM field? So we have to make that change. And whatever I can do to help facilitate, whatever I can do to advocate, I am so ready to do so. There's an old stigma, an old mindset that it should be male, but it isn't. So why is this needed? Well, lack of gender and racial diversity. We, our organizations could benefit greatly from hiring underrepresented minorities in the workforce. Again, I cannot tell you how many times I've been on that line with those students that could relate better to someone that understands and is from the same culture. Diversity leads to greater productivity and it allows for better problem solving. And this is just overall, we have different groups working together, collaborating on our project. Everyone is gonna have a different idea, different perspective. So that's what it's about. How do we collaborate? How, we, how are we more productive? 
for our students. And there's an opportunity for growth, improvement, and transformation for our organizations. A professor, uh, Byers Winston, uh, she's professor of internal medicine at the Madison University, received a grant to investigate how mentors define diversity and develop ways to measure the impact of mentor research experiences on career outcomes. And this is what she found. Diversity drives innovation. And I agree. People from diverse backgrounds who, who collaborate on team projects can produce innovative ideas because of their cultural differences. I'm so happy that our VP for Cal State San Bernardino IT is here, Dr. Sudakar, because that's one of the things he always talks about, innovation, innovation, how can we collaborate as a community to make the resources available to our students. Racial, ethnic minorities, and women are two of the largest segments of the workforce. So yes, minority women are two of the largest segments. So that's why we want to reach out to them. That's why I want to reach out. The job group for STEM occupations is extremely high. This means job security. So working on cutting edge technology and just helps you develop those job skills that are transferable. Technology is part of our country. Uh, our country's culture. It's uh, so creating a program for these girls or helping them with their with their STEM education um, is going to be something that shows them that the possibilities are endless. And STEM, and STEM jobs yield high salaries. You see that a STEM job starts at fifty five thousand, and then non STEM thirty three thousand. So there's endless possibilities. One of the things I had to look at in my project was the student success and institutional effectiveness. So this project will benefit my campus, which is the CSU's B as we help bring awareness of the career opportunities and the university resources that are available to underrepresented minority students, which will increase the university's effectiveness in the recruitment, retention, and graduation of minority students in the STEM disciplines. And another thing is that it aligns with the CSUSB strategic plan. Uh, which is to serve and engage the communities and to enhance social, economic, and cultural well-being. And of course, it aligns with the objective of the university, which is to identify and prioritize strategic opportunities for aligning community needs with appropriate resources for the mutual benefit. So the benefit of the organization and the benefit of our students. So it's a win-win situation for all of us. And of course, CSUSB is a Hispanic serving institution that is focused on bringing that awareness of the resources that are available to Latinos. I, a Latina that works at CSUSB, was not aware of how many resources there are in STEM. And it's been enlightening to see this. And now I wanna just kind of help bring those resources to light to those young girls. So I would like to help bridge that gap. One of the questions for the project was the tentative cost, which of course is in an early stage of development. So there's no cost associated at this time with this project. Um, I've been doing my, my volunteer time and just uh, calling in and doing virtual meetings because of the whole pandemic. So it's been pretty much a no, no cost associated with it. And also, but of course, if, the pro, if, the, if, if and when the project takes off, then of course I'm, I'm planning on reaching out to organizations and to companies to seek out grants and sponsorships of this program. And of course, it's part of the annual CSUSD budget. So whatever I have to do to reach out to those, uh, to those uh, leaders, I will do. I have one of them right here. <laughs> All right. Now I want to just 
come back to, to the Hetz Academy for a moment because Hetz played a, a crucial role in me being here today. My director reached out to me and he said, are you interested in attending this academy? And I read the objectives, I read everything and I thought it's interesting. But again, going back to that childhood that I felt that I wasn't worthy of, that of having those additional resources because of my personal experiences, I did second guess it. In fact, I waited to the last moment to submit my project because I, I felt like I'm gonna submit it and I'm gonna get rejected because that's what I grew up thinking, right? From my previous experience. So I submitted it and when I was accepted to participate in this academy, it helped me think about this problem that we have. Present a problem and find a solution. And it opened the doors for me. The academy offered eight great topics, academy technology, online learning, project management, professional development. It was a four day, eight to five, <laughs> week of just um, so much information to help me put a proposal together and submit. In reality, I am here because of that opportunity. It helped me understand a plan or create a plan and just run with it. And of course, that self-doubt was in the back of my head throughout the whole process till the moment that Mauricio <laughs> told me that I actually won I thought I was just presenting, but that self-doubt that was ingrained with me as a child, I thought I couldn't do it. So it offered me this opportunity to be here today. There's so many challenges in our culture and in our world in general, but if I can be an advocate, then I, am, I can do that. Speaking from my personal experience, you have to work with these young ladies. You have to work with the, the diverse, uh, population in order to help them. And now I see so many resources that are available. There's, uh, I've, I've reached out to the STEM advising on, on our campus. There's a STEM group on our campus. There's the Upward Bound. All of these are resources that I've reached out to in this process that I am going to be meeting with in the next couple of weeks. Kids That Code, a private art organization as well. So I've reached out to a variety of resources that I wish I would have had someone in when I was growing up to help me through this. And I wanna go back to the beginning in which I said that just my personal, my, my childhood experiences were the ones that made me feel like I wasn't worthy of the same education as the rest. Because my high school teacher, my, excuse me, my high, high school counselor told me the following, and I forgot to mention it earlier. He told me, uh, this is your schedule. You're going to sign up for typing for your elective. And I was, I did not want to take typing. I wanted the business <laughs> class, but I did not get the chance. I did not get the choice. I mean, all of those little things, starting at a young age, can create that self-doubt. It can. Especially when you have parents that do not even have a clue of what's going on. So it's so helpful for, to be an advocate. It's, it's such a, something that I'm passionate about. Just working in, in a, like I said, working in the IT di uh, di division, and not only that, just working in a, in a church environment, it just has helped me have that heart for everyone in general. And let me check the time. Okay. Let me do some more. Okay. Now, one of the things that I didn't touch about, but I did get through my conversations with different um, organization was that now the trend is even worse during the post pandemic because statistics are showing that the access to technology is more difficult for our minorities. 
And again, back to the story of the young girl in fourth grade that couldn't get a whole month getting a hold of her teacher. Though that's stressful. That's that's really scary to know that our educators or some educators are not always uh, there for students. So we're seeing how difficult it is to bridge that gap in their education, uh, the hot spots and the internet slow uh, competition with siblings or, and just so much going on. So we have to intervene in order to make things better and help close the gap in, in their education. So I know that our campus, we have hot spots and that's been a godsend for our students. Uh, we have the technology, the laptop program in which students that are not uh, have that access to laptops can go check one out. And now we have the C Success Initiative, which is iPad. They get an iPad and the, the keyboard folio in order for them to connect. So all of these resources are available, but how do we make it available to all of, all of our students? So I think it's important to find that support and create that uh, diversity. Ensure that everyone has the equal in, uh, opportunity to education. We have to be sensitive to different cultures with different, and different experiences because we can bring in a mix and make it better. And although the program that I'm the program that I envision is for Latinas, I'd like to open it up or make sure that everyone has an open opportunity to, to this type of program. Stereotypes will continue throughout our educational system, but we can be advocates and I, that's what I wanna do. I wanna be an advocate for these female Latinas. And that concludes my presentation.